Welcome again my AI art enthusiast brethren, AI by curious lads, and homo erectus. I feel that scientists were being cheeky when they came up with the name for that one. This video is a part 2 of my Fixio face series that helps you repair your AI art creation abominations. The first part of the series went over a tool that will automatically repair your face, but GFP Ganimage repair sometimes does too good of a job on repair and leaves the model with porcelain skin and face. As I said in my previous video, I like the little details on a character that give it character, such as freckles, dirt, fine hairs, or poor definition. So, I will show you how to do this as fast as possible. For this next trick, you will need to download a program called GIMP, which is the poor man's Photoshop. By that I mean, it's completely free to use. I will not tell you how to install it, because you can figure out clicking next for everything when installing your program. We'll install the program. Once you have GIMP installed, go ahead and right click on the original unedited photo, and select opening GIMP. Now right click on the image, and choose scale image. Now, go into the width or length resolution box and type the asterisk character followed by the number 2, and press enter, then click on scale. You may get a warning the image will be too big, don't worry about it, just click OK. This will double the size of your image, which is important, because you will need to match it with photo you edited with GFP GAN, which was upscaled by two times. At the bottom right you will see the layer window, double click on the name of the file, and rename it to bottom. Now take the picture you fixed, and drag it into the layers from your desktop, or wherever you saved it. If that doesn't work for you, then click on file, open as layers, and find the file manually. Rename that layer to middle. Now you have two images in your layers, make sure the old image you named bottom is at the bottom, or this won't work, if you completely didn't listen to me, when I said to rename the first layer, then click on the eye to hide, that layer to see the true picture you're not looking at. Just to be clear, if you hide a layer, it would only make sense the other layer is visible, which will reveal which photo is which. I feel I had to explain that for some of the smooth brains out there. Before we start meshing anything together we need to fix the major flaws with the clone and heal tools. The first thing I will fix is this girl's eyes. Since one of them seems unnatural, I will press C key to access my clone tool. You will know it has been accessed because your cursor will turn into a stamper. Now choose a size on the left toolbar that will fit the eye which will be 85 for this picture with 0. Aspect ratio and 0 angle. Aspect ratio will make things wide, and angle will make things crooked. We just want to clone the iris which is round, so increase the size which increases the radius. Then I'm going to select 25 brush hardness and 15 force. You can play with this to see what works for what you're doing. Now, I will choose alignment at the bottom as aligned, which will make an replica from my reference point. So if I selected the entire face, and started painting to the left, it will move the entire face to the left from the point you referenced with control plus left click. In our case we're just doing an iris, so put the circle over the good eye and press control plus left click, and it will copy that eye. Now go to the left eye and rub it in, don't be afraid to experiment and rub it in good, just press ctrl plus z, if you mess up, if you see hard bumps, you will have to lower the brush intensity or use the heel tool, to fix the edges. Now for the heel tool, press the h key to access the heel tool, you will know you're using it, when your cursor turns into band-aids, cute right, the heel tool mechanics works almost the same as the clone tool, with the exception it will only take a sample, and try and blend in your selection, rather than make a clone. I will remove this blemish real quick, there now, all better. The reason we did the cloning, and healing on the good picture, before we started adding back textures is, because we are mixing the layers, for lack of a better word, so it will not work on the back end. Now we got that out of the way, let's get to work. For these next steps, you will have to do it in order, or it might not work right. Now double click on the top layer, or go to the mode drop down box above your layers and choose, grain extract mode, and you will see your image turn grayish silver. Now right click on your top layer again and select, new from visible. This will create another layer at the very top which will look like a grey window. Ok, let's rename that grey one to top and the fixed image to middle for the sake of this tutorial. 
Now, double click on the top layer or grayed out layer and select grain merge, and press OK. Now you should see a little more of the face again. We can now double click on the mid layer and turn it back to normal, which is at the top. Whoa, now it looks broken again. That's OK. Right click on the top layer and select add layer mask. We are going to add a white full opacity, and select invert mask at the bottom. The face should look smooth again, without the grayness over the character's face. Now we did all the prep work and we just have to spray it in, gently, to get back any texture, scars, fine hairs, or poor details, and yes, of course, freckles. First order of business we have to prep our palette. On my GIMP I got a custom white and black gradient on the right which I recommend you do as well. Press P for paint brush or A for airbrush, and go to the color options at the bottom left, I recommend using the airbrush for fine details, and the paintbrush to paint the areas outside the face, such as the hair, background, and jewelry. On the left toolbar go to color options and scroll down a bit and choose blinds, which should just be black and white. A palette should appear at the top right. Now you can click in those colors, to dip your brush in that color. There are more ways, to dip your brushes there is more ways to skin a cat, which by the way, whoever came up with that expression is sick, and I'm not sure how, that one caught on. Since we are using the airbrush we will have to change some options. I will make the size at the top left, which is the radius 150, hardness 25, and force 15 then make my rate 40 and flow 20 which will be a soft touch. Just think of the numbers as percentages of how hard you want to go. The reason we choose white and black for our colors is because the mask is completely white and inverted. So when we choose color black it will spray more of the fixed image. And if you use spray white you will get more of the older image to bring back your textures. If you forget which one is which, just swap between the colors and see which one brings back your details of course. Make sure the color white or whitish gray is selected, and start coloring in her freckles, and blemishes back with the fine hairs, only in the good spots, if you see the eye portion you will see it's pretty messed up, that's okay you can control Z, or if you want to mesh you can select black again, or a fade from white to black to get her in between result, or weak source version of the texture, I recommend keep your brush settings pretty light and only using the gradient colors, to adjust the texture strength. For example, grey for medium, white for strong, and black for avert. You can even choose the more gradient spaced out grey to get a more dispersed color. Once you get a product you're satisfied with, and you think you're good to go, wait, don't just save the picture or you will have to use GIMP to open it every time, which I highly don't recommend. Click on file, then click on export, then select where you want it to go. Before you click export, change the file extension. To the type you want it, I sometimes need it to be JPEG instead of PNG, so I will put a .jpg at the end of the file name. That's it, you're done, now export it to wherever your heart desires. There are more advanced techniques and lighting tricks, Gaussian blurs, but I only wanted to give you the quick and dirty to make this easy as possible. Once you get a hang of it, it will take 1-2 to two minutes to completely process it in GIMP. I will do the next one at regular speed to show you it's pretty quick, once you got the hang of it.
see, no sweat, easy peasy. Anyways, thank you for watching and as always, Ionera, Aloha, Adios, Vagia, Alavada, Aniyan, Paralam, and please come again.